Hello guys, welcome to the next episode of this Mercedes Sprinter van conversion. In today's video we're going to be installing the Truma Combi Boiler. I know from the comments that a lot of you guys have been waiting anxiously for this video. I've also really been looking forward to installing this boiler myself. I've done a very detailed video a little while ago showing how this boiler works. So if you want to have a look at that first, I'll put the link up here and I'll also put a link in the description. This video is just going to focus on the installation of the heater. It's a combi boiler, so that means it provides warm air for heating and it's also going to heat our hot water for showering and washing up in the kitchen. It's got a burner that fires down the centre of the boiler and then wrapped around that is a water jacket which holds 10 litres of water. So at any one time there's always 10 litres of stored hot water here, but obviously this particular boiler is a 4 kilowatt plus 1.8 kilowatts of electric so it will reheat the water very quickly and it'll actually come up to full temperature within about 20 minutes. There's a number of different boilers in this range. They all work on LPG and electric and there's a 2 kilowatt gas version, 4 kilowatt and 6 kilowatt gas and then they each come with 1.8 kilowatts of electric heat via two 900 watt elements. What we'll do first before we put the heater in the van we'll just have a look at the connections on the front here we'll have a look at the flue connections and also the electrical connections we'll discuss each of those and then we'll get to installing it actually in the vehicle first of all let's talk about the water connections there's one connection at the bottom here and one at the top the one at the bottom is the cold water inlet it's a 10 millimeter stainless steel pipe and the one at the top here is the hot water outlet Again, that's also a 10 millimeter stainless steel pipe. In the installation pack that you get from Truma, you get these two elbow connections. One's for the cold water, one for the hot water. The cold water connection is simply an elbow. It's got a 10 millimeter connection on one end and a 12 millimeter connection on the other. They're a push fit fitting. This will simply push onto the boiler and then the LDPE tube that we're using to distribute the water throughout the van the 12 millimeter pipe will push into the other end of this elbow. Then on the hot water side, very similar, it's an elbow connection, but we've also got this little discharge pipe here. Again, it's 10 millimeters on the inlet, 12 millimeters on the outlet. This will push straight onto the boiler at the top here. And again, we connect our 12 millimeter LDPE pipe into the bottom of this elbow. Now this little discharge pipe at the top here, this is an automatic air vent. What it will do is it will make sure that it releases all the air in the system and make sure that the boiler is fully flooded all the time. So this will have a little bit of clear hose connected to it. And this will then drop down through a small hole in the bottom of the van and any air will be released. If there is a small bit of water that comes past this, air release valve then that can just be discharged through this little clear bit of hose through the bottom of the van. So they're the two water connections very very simple. Also on the front we've got the gas connection. This is a threaded connection here and very kindly in the kit we've also got the compression nut and a little small olive. Now with gas boilers with permanent installations in vehicles you must make a rigid hard copper connection onto this boiler and the same goes for permanently fitted gas appliances like cookers. Um, as part of the regulations there must be a permanent fixed hard connection to those appliances if they're permanently fitted into your vehicle. So in this case we're going to run an 8mm copper pipe round to the front of the boiler and then with this compression olive and nut we'll make that connection onto the front of the boiler there. I've actually run all my gas from the boiler right the way back to where the LPG tank is in one continuous coil without any joints in it. So I'm only going to have a joint here on the boiler and where it connects to the gas valve on the gas cylinder. So that's just going to minimise the possible risk of any leaks throughout my van. But obviously once we've done this installation I will be going through a proper full test on this gas system before we commission it and put it into operation. Let's just talk about the flue connection. Here's the flue outlet. This is a room sealed boiler and what that means is 
the air for combustion and the exhaust gases all go out of this one concentric terminal here. So the combustion air that the boiler needs to fire comes down a tube round this outer ring here and then the exhaust gases leave through this inner ring and then the flue is actually a pipe within a pipe so it's a concentric flue so you connect the exhaust gas pipe onto this inner circle and the combustion air pipe gets connected onto this outer circle it's a very clever design because the air for combustion is not drawn from your van so you don't need to provide additional ventilation within the vehicle it draws all its combustion air directly from outside via the terminal that's in the side of the van. All of that air comes down the outside tube, so it kind of makes that tube very cool in your van. So the exhaust flue that's internal within your van, the outside of it stays relatively cool because the air coming into the boiler is kind of keeping that outer jacket nice and cool. And then the hot exhaust gases, which is this smaller inner circle here, that goes down the inside of that tube. is surrounded by that combustion air. So it's a very good safety feature as well. You know, it keeps that exhaust duct cool. So, you know, it's not going to cause any issues with it being hot inside your van. I'll show you how the terminal's drilled into the side of the van. And I'll show you how we connect that flue terminal onto the boiler. Let's turn the boiler around a little bit and then we can have a look at the electrics and the warm air duct inside. Here we have the opposite end of the boiler and this is where the hot air comes out. This boiler's got four connections and it will accept this flexible ducting. It's got a foil liner. It's very flexible but also because of the corrugations it's also very strong and very rigid. So it will withstand quite a bit of pressure. You can bend it into some very tight radiuses so it's easy to mould around to where you want it to go in the vehicle and it also comes with a range of fittings as well so we've got some T's here and we've also got some very tight knuckle bends. The fittings have got serrated teeth inside here which when you push the corrugations into the fitting they'll grip onto it. You can hear that just going past those teeth. And that's plenty secure enough to hold that in that fitting. I mean, if you wanted to be belt and braces, you could just pop a little screw into that little hole there just to hold it permanently. But really, that's nice and secure in there as it is. What Truma recommend is that the boiler is going to be warmest at the top. So these two top connections are going to be slightly hotter than these two bottom connections. So what they recommend is the furthest outlets from the boiler, they recommend you connect those to the top connections and the outlets that are closest to the boiler, they recommend that you connect those to the bottom. And then it just gives a better sort of even distribution of heat throughout the van. And the areas really that I'm going to be running the ducts to that I consider to be the coldest, like the back of the van where the garage is and the rear doors are, and the front cab, which is a very big heat loss area of the vehicle because it's got all that single glass, I'm going to connect those two ducts to these top outlets because that's going to give me the biggest amount of heat out of the boiler and it's going to go to the areas where it's needed the most. Inside the boiler connections again they've got these little ridges that hold on to the corrugations and there's also got a, like a little metal clip which acts like a little barb and that also clips onto these ridges so as you push it in there it makes quite a solid connection. The boiler must be secured to the floor of the van and there's mounting feet located in each of the corners and there are some screws provided in the installation kit to secure it to the vehicle. Let's come in a little bit closer and have a look at the electrical. Underneath this cover are the electrical connections. This cover simply lifts off and there we see there's a little printed circuit board here. At this end we've got the 12 volt connection, so there's a 12 volt power supply required for the controls and there's two spade connectors here, positive and negative, so that's where we connect our 12 volt supply to. There's two little small spade connectors here at this end of the PC board and they're for connecting the room temperature sensor. There's a little temperature sensor that comes as part of the kit and that gets mounted at high level in the van and that's what senses the room temperature and feeds that back to the boiler. 
and then at the far end here we've got two comms connections and they'd be for where you plug in the comms cable for the LCD display. So this liquid crystal display is going to be mounted at high level in the kitchen and then we've already run in the cable that connects this to the boiler in the first fix installation. As this is the electrical version and we've got two electric elements in here, it comes pre-wired with this 230 volt mains cable. So we're going to connect our 230 volt mains supply to this via a local fuse spur. It's always advisable to have local isolation next to the boiler. For safety reasons, if you want to work on the boiler, you can simply isolate it. Or if there's a problem with the boiler, there's a local means of isolation. So they're the electrical connections. We've got 12 volt mains voltage. We've got the room temperature sensor and we've got the comms cable for the controller. Now we're going to be dealing with LPG gas and electrics on the installation of this boiler. And I'd always advise if you're not comfortable installing those systems yourself to get a qualified person to do that for you. And I'd always recommend that both systems are tested once they're complete. Okay, so here we've got the boiler in the position where it's going to be situated underneath the bench seat, which is underneath this side window. Got our hot and cold water pipes running through the back there. I've got a couple of options. I can either take them round the back and connect onto the front, or I can turn them just this side and connect on here. And that really depends where I want that drop out safety valve, you know, the frost protection valve to drop out through the floor of the van. So I'll have a look underneath and see whether this side is going to be more convenient or maybe drilling through the floor that side would be more convenient. I've got the grey wastewater tank under this side of the vehicle so I just need to be aware that I don't drill through into the top of the tank. We've got this room sensor cable to pull in as well for the little tiny room sensor. Now I've got a conduit already run in for the LCD controller, that's the cable wrapped up in that plastic bag and that's the conduit there. Now that conduit runs up the wall here, comes up to high level and then I've just put a break in it here, you can see the cable inside there. So I'm going to pull this cable out here and then the sensor can go on the front face of the wall cupboards which are above the bench seat in here. That cable then disappears up into the ceiling, comes all the way across the ceiling and into this little cubby hole here where we're going to have all the remote controls for the heater and for the solar panels etc. Right, we've just had to carry out open heart surgery on the van. Obviously this was all insulated and sealed up and vapour barriered. But I need to get the flue out through here. So temporarily just cut the vapour barrier along the main structural members. Peeled this section back and removed the insulation. We'll make the flue exit through here. And then we'll put all the insulation and the vapour barrier back. Make sure all these joints are foil taped. And it'll be like we've never been here. We're just marking out the location of the boiler flue where it's going to go through the outside of the van. This little sharpie mark on the side of the van here indicates the uppermost height of the seat compartment. So it can't be any more higher than that. So there you can see I've now marked the circle for the flue and I've marked the centre. I did a whole video dedicated to cutting holes in the side of your van when we did all of the hookup points and the water entry etc. So if you want to see in detail how we did that, you just refer back to this video. I'll put a link up in the corner there. cover the side wall where the boiler and the bench seats go in I've just taken a piece of 9mm ply I've just covered the top half with some grey carpet that's all going to be concealed behind the bench seat and the cushions but if the cushion fell down or we took the cushions off to make up a temporary bed or something like that 
I want something there other than just a raw bit of plywood. So this will now give us a nice finish to match the window. And then below that, this bit of plywood will all be behind the bench seat. And obviously there's where the flue comes through. This valve that comes with the Truma heater is a safety valve and it's also a drain valve so that when you want to winterize the system, you know, if you're parking up for a long period of time, this is installed at the lowest point. You lift up this little lever and then it just drains all of the cold water out of the boiler and out of the pipework. It also acts as a safety valve. If the pressure builds up in the boiler too much, this valve will open and it will momentarily just dump a load of water out through the bottom of the van so it's just a safety feature. This plastic hose needs to go through the floor of the van. I need to drill about an 18 mil hole. But what I find best to do if you ever need to drill holes in the bottom of your van is to do it from underneath, find out where the best location is, use a small high speed steel bit and drill a pilot hole coming up from underneath. Now I've done that already and there's a little tiny little hole here. You can see where that drill bit is, you won't be able to see it because of this floor pattern, but there's a pilot hole there. I'm now going to drill it from above and I'm just going to gradually go up in sizes. I'm not going to go straight to the 18 mil. I'm going to do uh, maybe a 9 mil and then gradually creep up on it. It's much easier to drill, you know, a small amount of material than try and chew off too much in one go. There we go, so that's through with the 9mm, now to step it up to the bigger one. That's it, she's through. Now with any hole you drill in the steel of your van, you've got to make sure that you seal up the raw metal edges with some primer or hammerite. Once we've got the drain hose through there, we're going to come back and seal it up with some Sikaflex, stop the water getting in from underneath. On the cold feed to the boiler we need to fit a check valve. This is a one way valve so it will only allow the water to flow in one direction. There's a little arrow on here, I hope you can see that. So the water will only flow into the boiler. And then if the boiler pressurises it won't allow the hot water back out down the cold feed in effect. If it over pressurises we've got this safety valve. This will discharge water out through the bottom of the van. So we're going to put this check valve here. This is our cold feed supply coming in here. Short little bit of pipe between these and then out of here onto the boiler. So there we go, so our feed coming in. We've just got an elbow there. This is the check valve with the direction of flow this way. This is the safety valve, also acts as a drain valve and then this will then carry on and connect on to the boiler. I want this gas pipe to come roughly down this line here, turning down the side of the boiler and then turn in front of the boiler. So I need to start the bend about 30 mil, 25 to 30 mil back from this line, just to get that little radius on there. Got me little pipe benders here. Yeah, where I want to be. This copper's really nice and soft. There we go, so now we can clip that and that will come nicely down that line. Now along this gas supply to the boiler I want to fit this little isolating valve. This is a little quarter turn ball valve. That isolates it, that turns it back on. Got little compression fittings with olives. So what we want to do is cut this pipe here, screw this to the floor and make that connection on there at low level. So we've got a means of shutting the gas off if there's ever a problem with the boiler. The best thing to cut this copper with is a set of copper pipe cutters. They don't leave any burrs on the outside of the pipe, give you a nice clean cut. I'm going to screw this valve down first and then I can use that to my advantage to tighten it up. Just 
nice and solid now so thing you've got to be careful of is not to over tighten these compression nuts because what you can do is crush the olive and then you'll create a leak and if you've tightened them up too much you've got nowhere else to go you can't actually just nip them up so the best thing to do is just do like a quarter of a turn we'll put it under a pressure test if we have got any issues we can always nip it up a little bit more far better doing it that way than to over tighten That's all you need to do. The European standard says that you must clip this copper pipe at maximum centres of 500 millimetres. I always like to go a little bit closer than that, so I put mine about every 300 or every foot. When you're installing these John Guest fittings, there's a little line on there which indicates the insertion depth. It's approximately 25 mil from the end of the fitting to where that line is, but it's handy you can place the fitting where you want it to go. I want to bring that hot water pipe down here and then I can mark the pipe where I want it cut. Cut it with me little guillotine. Need to put these little inserts in here because this is a hot water service. This pipe could get warm so it needs a little bit of extra support. They simply push in all the way home there you go there's the insert in and then we can just push the fitting on simple as that and we'll put some clips down now we've already got the large jubilee clip on the outside pipe you need to cut the inside pipe longer than the outside pipe because what you need to do is compress about two centimeters of these rings nice and tight so they're really close together like that then you can put the smaller ring on with these teeth facing the boiler so that pushes on so that these teeth are now sitting on the end of the flue pipe now what we can do is push this one onto the inner pipe until it's nice and snug all the way home then we'll do up that star connection and then we can slide the outer sleeve over this one and do up the final jubilee clip by compressing these rings we're just giving something really nice and firm for this clip to bite onto so we can do this clamp up nice and tight now That's now nice and secure on the boiler. And then we'll pull this one over the top of the outside. Slide the Jubilee clip down to the end, making sure that it's over that spigot and then just tighten that up. And that's enough to secure that on the boiler then. What I want to do is I want to pull a bend on this 8mm copper so that the pipe's facing down to the floor and then pull another bend so it's coming along the front of the boiler underneath the cold feed. So I've got to pull two bends at 90 degrees to each other, 12 centimetres on centres. So let's give that a go. So I've pulled the first bend, that end's going to end up going into the boiler. Now I want to pull the second bend. I want the bend to come round the form of this way, so as if it's going along the floor. And obviously when it gets to the 90 degree mark, I want that position to be 12 centimetres from there. Now let's get my tape. That's not bad there. 12 centimeters so lock down the bender just make sure that it's square and then pull that bend and come round till it's 90 degrees sometimes it's worth just going a little bit past because the copper will spring back on itself and there we go let's just check that Yep, 
Yeah, 12 centimetres on centres. So there's our two bends that we've just pulled. Obviously that one will get connected to the boiler. It will come along underneath the boiler. And then what we want to do now is pull another bend here because it's got to turn around the corner and go into our little gas valve that we've got there. I'll mark where I want the centre of that pipe to end up and then when I put it in the bender I'll probably come back about 25 mil, and then I'll know it will end up in that location once I've pulled it. So there's our mark. Now when we've pulled this bend that mark's got to end up round by the 90 so we need to bring it, advance it forward a little bit to allow enough copper to come round this bend. Just make sure that that is at 90 degrees to the other end. And then pull that round. Go past 90 a little bit. And then come back. And there you go, you can see my pencil mark has ended up on the 90. So we've got our bit of copper pipe all bent up now with the pulled bends. I've got the compression nuts and olives on, so it just remains to make these connections. I'm just going to go a quarter of a turn, I'm going to leave that and we'll test that. Same with this one, do it up sort of finger tight and then just quarter of a turn. I'm just going to nip that up, that's fine. And then we'll put a couple of clips on here just to support it so it doesn't rattle around. That's it, that's nice and strong now, that's not going to go anywhere, that's really really secure. Wherever you've got gas appliances installed in your motorhome, because you're moving around there may be a possibility of a leak developing, so wherever you've got gas you always need to make sure that you've got a dropout vent through the floor of the vehicle direct to outside. LPG is heavier than air, so it will always fall to low level. And if you've got an adequate vent there, that will make sure that it doesn't build up in your vehicle. I want this hot water service to come across the front of the boiler over the top of the cold feed. So I reckon I need a piece of pipe about 19 centimeters long. Because this is hot water, this needs these little inserts in. So we'll push these in, one in the other end, that's it, so it's got support both ends. Make sure it's pushed right the way to the stop, and the same on the boiler. And then that will just come along in front of the boiler and then turn 90 degrees here, another elbow and go back to where our hot water supply was back there. We'll put a few clips along the floor here. We've covered a lot of information in that video so I think I'll leave that one there for now. We've got all the pipe surfaces connected to the Truma boiler and all that remains is for us to do the electrics and the warm air ducting and then plug in those digital controls. We selected Truma because we wanted the hot water generation side, but I can see with the heating distribution and those controls, that's going to be a fantastic addition to our van conversion. I'll put links below to Truma's website where you can find out further information on the range of heaters that they do. If you've got any questions, please do leave me a comment and I'll try and get back to you as quickly as I can. Thanks very much for watching. Cheers.